Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today as always I've got an interesting Astro topic for you guys. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Um, over the years I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count, which brings me to this cool topic and what is that? Well. The title, of course, kind of gave it away, but that is, what can you actually see through a two-inch telescope? Oh, wait, that's not my coffee. <laughs> All right, so for those of you guys that watch my channel, you guys know that I like APOs, right? I've got a number of them. There's a couple hiding out uh, back there. Um, so you might be wondering, like, you know, what the heck, why, why, why does Vlad have a 2-inch APO all of a sudden, right? I mean, why not just use a 4-inch? Well, it's kind of an interesting story, so I'll tell it. Why, why not, right? So back in the early 2000s when I was getting into the hobby, um, I bought my first uh, APO. I think I've mentioned that before. It was a Teleview 85. I was really stoked about the scope. But, you know, you keep on reading internet forums and they'll kind of get you. And, of course, if you read internet forums all the time, you know, People will, you know, just swear that Takahashi, I mean, these things are like the gift from the gods. So I had to check it out, right? I mean, you know, especially after buying the TV85, especially back then, you know, it made me, you know, pretty poor, which unfortunately hasn't changed, you know, till, you know, till today. But um, this is about what I could afford. One of these popped up for sale and I had to try it. I mean, you know, this thing was really cool. Now, being a little bit younger and a little bit more foolish, I did end up selling that one. Uh, recently, I came across this and I had to own it again. So for me, I mean, this is more of like a sentimental type of purchase. But, you know, the other night I had this guy out as well as the uh, TSA 102 side by side. I'm posting the picture in right now uh, that I took of that, uh, on that night. And man, I had a good, you know, run with this. I got a, you know, had a good time observing with this thing. So I thought I'd share what you could actually see through a two inch telescope. All right, so it's not very often that I get to hold an APO like this. So why not do it, right? This thing is small enough. But anyhow, let's run through the specs real quick. I've got a cheat sheet there that I'm gonna be kind of checking out. Uh, basically a 50 millimeter objective on this thing, which translates to 1.97 inches. Uh, the focal length on this is 400 millimeters, which I believe makes this an F8. Uh, inch and a quarter focuser on this particular one. I'm not sure how many other brands actually made an actual two inch telescope besides Takahashi. Uh, moving on, so the, the useful uh, high power magnification that you could use on this is about 100x and the reason that I say that is because that gives you an exit pupil of about 0.5 millimeters which basically I mean that gives you a pretty uh, dim image already. I cranked this baby up to the maximum that the batter zoom would go with the 2.25x uh, Barlow which is 112x personally. The Dwarves limit uh, on a 2 inch telescope is 2.5 three arc seconds which basically if you're not familiar with that or what the heck i'm talking about that is basically how close of double stars that are of an equal uh, magnitude that a telescope can resolve and lastly the limiting magnitude on the two inch telescope is around uh, 12th magnitude all right with all that out of the way so you're like you just tell me what you can actually see with one of these things <laughs> Okay, so I'll start with the moon. Uh, the very first thing, you know, the moon was out the, the, the other night when I was observing. I took a look of, at the moon with this thing. I mean, uh, at the low power setting, I think I was using like a uh, 15 millimeter eyepiece or something. I'll, I'll post in the magnification that that gives you. At a low power, you know, I mean, the, the image was just like absolutely razor sharp. I mean, um, that's kind of to be expected, but Takahashi's with their great contrast and, you know, awesome optics, they're kind of known for, you know, providing really awesome lunar images. Um, the, the higher that I cranked up the power, the dimmer the image started to get. I'd say it was acceptable up to about 75x. I'd say really, I mean, the view up to 75x was, you know, fairly similar with the 4-inch APO, right? Not too big of a difference. Now, the closer that I got to 100x, and especially when I, you know, when I was at like 112x, so maxing this thing out with the battery zoom, I mean, the image 
was no, I mean, there's no, no uh, mistaking that that thing gave you a much brighter image and just everything was just more detailed on the moon. So for the moon, I'd say that, yeah, this thing, as long as you're staying below 100X, provides some awesome views, you know, it's definitely a go for the moon. So moving on, my next, you know, like the next thing that I'd really see myself using something like this for is double stars. How did this thing do on double stars? Um, I didn't write down names, but I did look at, you know, several brighter double stars that had a fairly bright, uh, wide separation that was probably, you know, like, you know, probably about above three arc seconds. I didn't really try to test this thing. And I'm sure that this thing would resolve the Dwarves Luna, which is 2.3. And as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure this thing will go down to like two arc seconds. But anyway, so for the brighter double stars, I mean, this thing is awesome, man. I mean, you get those really nice pinpoint stars. I mean, it's really lightweight, right? I mean, I could see taking this thing out like on a really like camera tripod and, you know, just doing some quick observing for double type of star, for star work. You know, pretty awesome for that. So for double stars that are brighter, I'd say probably magnitude eight or brighter, that have a decently wide separation. Yeah, this thing is a total go. Okay, now let's get to the meat of the review, right? <laughs> uh, how does this thing do on deep sky type of stuff? Well, it's, you know, you're probably not gonna be surprised to hear, but Aperture does rule. I took a look at, you know, some of the brighter deep sky stuff. I didn't really, you know, try to hunt down anything like 2D or anything like that. I looked at M42, the, Amer the Orion Nebula. I looked at M45, uh, the Pleiades. I looked at the double cluster with both of these scopes. I mean, there is just really no question. No matter if I was at the low power, the higher power, or whatever power. I mean, that thing always provided a much, you know, brighter view, just more detailed. So, I mean, this thing is cool for, uh, you know, deep sky type of stuff, just kind of for the novelty factor, really, just to kind of see, you know, like how stuff will look at it. I mean, would I really, you know, consider this like, you know, any type of a great uh, deep sky scope? Mm, not really. And the reason that I kind of say that is because this thing only has an inch and a quarter focuser, right? So you can't use two inch uh, eyepieces to get your really uh, wide field of view. Uh, the, the widest that you could do is the uh, 24 millimeter uh, 68 degree eyepiece. All right, so one thing that I did not try out with this um, is observing the sun with an appropriate sun filter. And the reason that I did is because I do not own an appropriate sun filter for this specific scope. Not yet, I know I'm you know, hopefully gonna get one eventually. Uh, but I, this would make an excellent solar scope too because you know, the sun is the same size as the moon, right, in the sky. So, um, I mean, yeah, this would you know, give you, with the, again, with the appropriate filter, a great view in the white light of the sun. So that'd be a really, another really good use for it. All right, so now that kind of covers, you know, like all the points that I kind of wanted to talk about. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what a 50 millimeter uh, scope is able to show you in the night sky. Um, overall, I think, because uh, I've used 60 millimeter scopes as well, it's not going to be too much different from this. I mean, it'll give you a little bit more brightness, not too much more. So a 60 millimeter will definitely apply it to everything that I said. I mean, in what situations would I actually, you know, like use something like either it's 50 millimeter or 60 millimeter? Um, you know, if you're after just like a really lightweight setup, you know, let's say you're backpacking or something like that, this is awesome for that. I mean, you know, it's really small, really lightweight. You can put it on a camera tripod that maybe you're sharing with your DSLR or something like that. The other thing too, I mean, you, you know, as you saw in the clip, right, where uh, this thing was sitting on my seven inch APO, I mean, you can use this as a finder and a bigger telescope, right? So that's really cool. Uh, that kind of the more practical probably situation is that you, you know, you might want to use this as a guide scope because this is, you you know, it should give you a, a plenty of uh, focal length on most telescopes as a guide scope as well. So now, hopefully you guys found this video interesting. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave them in the thin below. Again, if you're not a subscriber, do you hit that subscribe button to see more cool videos like this one, right? I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.